Hello, and welcome to my first video on the vocabulary that I'll be using in all my future videos. So, I'd like to start us off, get us in the mood, getting used to what I call the first slide tab of my Excel file. So, the first slide tab is some of my basic rules I'm going to adhere to in my videos. That is, I'll be going through the examples in my videos, period. If you want background, more of the mathematical training, I'd please look at other videos and read your book or send me emails about them. At any time, you should pause and make sure you take good and accurate notes on my examples. If you have any issue with any of my videos, please let me know. If there's a topic I'm missing, also let me know that. And as always, always have a clean copy of your data saved. So what that means is I would copy from this set we're going to work with, this file I'm going to work with, copy of this, and so you don't ever mess with this file. And then, no big deal, if your data gets destroyed because you have this clean copy right here. The good news, on my website, you'll always be able to access this file, so there's really no hard, no foul. You can't really destroy this file. So what you have over here are some of the basic skills I hope you will learn as we go through this semester. Some of the basic skills in Excel, that is. I want to make that very clear. These are some basic skills to slightly advanced skills in Excel that I hope you pick up as we go through this semester. I might add a few as we go through. All right, there will be some programs, some dot dist, some hypothesis test. There'll be some things I'm gonna ask you to build onto later. But these are the basic generic things a person will know as we go through this semester or through my videos, if you follow my videos in order. All right, let's jump into this video. This video is all about vocabulary. What do I mean by that? Well, I simply mean these words. You're going to hear from me these six words nonstop. That is variable. What is a variable? Well, a variable is the characteristic of an item or individual. It's the thing you want to study. The variable is what you're trying to study. For example, any one of these down here, which I took variable and split it into more details, is something of study. Eye color, ethnicity, gender, stress level, baskets made in a game, salary, GDP. There are anything you care about studying is a variable. When you gather that data, you're gathering data. That is the different values associated with the variable. So data is just all the collected values of that variable. So what it comes down to are these four things. You have the population. Well, the population would be all the items of which you want to reach a conclusion about. So what that means is, for example, if I would love to know the income of all, the average income of all males, adult males in New York State, that would be a very hard task unless I had a census or unless I had some way of collecting all the data for all the adult males in New York State. But that's the population, okay? A population is truly all the items you want. And so a parameter is a measurement of that population. A parameter is the mean, median, standard deviation, proportion, but the parameter is about the population. Over here, we have what I call the symbols I will be using and examples. So here's a parameter, mu, Greek letter mu. It stands for the population mean. This would be, again, like the average income of, for all males in New York. Think about that. I want the average income for all males in New York. That's going to be a hard task. Because I always think about the time and money involved. Well, if I don't have the tiny time and money involved in this study I want to do, what should I do? We'll get back to that. Now, we're going to use the Greek letter pi for population proportion. Greek letters usually signify the population parameter. So these three are parameters we're going to study this semester. Mu, pi, and sigma. Mu is the mean. Pi is the proportion. Sigma is the standard deviation. All three of these we're going to study and try to build confidence intervals, hypothesis tests around these three parameters. Examples of what a proportion would be like is, for example, the proportion of all females in New York who have a PhD. 
That would be an interesting question. What is the proportion of all females in New York who have an advanced degree, the PhD? Or maybe we care about the spread factor, the standard deviation. For example, we could care about the PSD, the population standard deviation of the stock prices for all stocks on the Dow Jones. And so let's just talk about the all stocks on the Dow Jones, that is a population, so that's sigma. And all females in New York, that would be pi, because it's proportion who have a PhD. Mu, average all, that's the mu. We just got to get used to these three Greek letters. So these three Greek letters, and we can bring this down a little bit so we can show everything at once, are parameters, because they talk about the population, all right? The parameter is a measure that describes a characteristic of the population. Now, these are hard to get to because of time and money. So what do we typically do? Collect a sample. A sample is a proportion of the population selected for analysis. How do you collect samples? Please read many, many books on unbiased samples, biased samples, what are good samples, what are not good sampling techniques. I'll let you read up on sampling techniques. Throughout this, I'm going to assume we have good sampling techniques. We are good at doing random samples. All right, once we've collected our sample, we will study the statistic. What is the statistic? It's the measure that describes the characteristic of the sample we care about. See, the parameter is for the population. The statistic is for the sample. The so here's the mu, population mean. Next to it, we can study the sample mean. So in studies, instead of studying all New Yorkers, I randomly picked 3,000 male New Yorkers and ask them their income. That would be the sample mean. In this example, population proportion, maybe I do a sample proportion. I collect a survey of 4,000 females and ask them, do you have a PhD, yes or no? And so I'd get a sample proportion. The population is standard deviation. Here's my example. I would do a sample standard deviation. I would look at a few of the stock prices, sorry, a few of the stocks on the Dow Jones and find the standard deviation of those. Though it'd probably be easy because there's only 100 stocks to probably find the population. But still, if that was tedious, maybe we collect 35. So N would be 35. N is usually sample size, okay? We'll learn about that later as we learn about our letters. That's going to be a huge key ingredient. Learn your alphabet. Mu, pi, sigma, N. N will be the count. So I can even include that here. N is the sample size. That's very important. Add that to my beautiful table. All right. So, again, if I want to study the population standard deviation of stock prices for all stocks on the Dow Jones, that's time, that's money, maybe I can't do. So what I'll do is instead take the sample standard deviation and I'll look at maybe 35 of the stocks on the Dow Jones and collect data on that. As long as I've collected the stocks in some kind of random representative fashion, I'll be good. And that's cool. And we have letters for that. We're going to write X bar when we look at the sample mean. We're going to use P, the American letter, for sample proportion. We are going to use S for sample standard deviation. So we've got some alphabet soup for you to memorize. And I would pause the video and just print or print, pause the video, take a picture, print it out, and just memorize the words you're going to hear from me in future videos. These are just a quick summary of the vocab just to get us started. I'll be adding as we go through, of course. So that variable, let's rip it apart. All right, so we got the variable. Let's rip it apart in detail by looking at the types of variables you can look at. So we're going to look at types of variables. And there are really two big sections, qualitative variables, and quantitative variables. Qualitative variables 
are variables that have values that can be placed into categories such as yes or no. Quantitative variables are variables whose values represent quantities. Now, each one of these, qualitative and quantitative, can be subbroken down into nominal, ordinal, or discrete and continuous. So, for example, what is a nominal variable? Well, that's a category in which there's no ranking implied. For example, eye color. There is no ranking system in eye color. Which eye color is better? Ethnicity. Not even going there. There is no ranking system in ethnicity. Gender. Again, no implied ranking system. What do you mean by that? Well, let's look at ordinal. Ordinal means the, the ranking is just implied. You know the ranking system. For example, shirt size. When you go in to buy shirts or pants, skorts, rompers, I don't know what the heck you buy, shoes, there is an applied measurement system there. Small, medium, large. You know what a small means. It's smaller than a medium. You know what a medium means. It's smaller than a large. Small, medium, large. It's implied. Everybody knows it. Stress level. Come on now. Three categories, and there's probably more if you really want to break it down. I think of three categories, low stress, medium stress, high stress, right? Stress levels lead to risk of heart attacks, risk of diabetes, risk of other infections. So understanding stress levels and the fact that it's ordinal is important. Drink sizes. Oh, there's another one. Drink sizes. Go to Starbucks, right? You order your Vente, Conte, Lante, Bonte, something. <laughs> Drink sizes. I would think of a small, medium, large. I'm not sure what they, grande, you know what I mean? What the sizes are over there at Starbucks. I can't afford them. I have kids. Ha, 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 ha. Bad joke. So anyways, those are ordinal variables because the categories have a rank. And it's implied. Nobody's going to fight with you about drink size or shirt size and what it means to be the difference between small, medium, or large. Qualitative variables. Let me just take you on a little road. Qualitative variables. I'm going to, in our next video, talk about how to display qualitative variables. I would display a qualitative variable first by building a pivot table. So that's what the next video I would watch is the pivot table video. From there, we're going to build bar charts and pie charts. When somebody gives me qualitative variables, I build bar charts and pie charts and other charts, but usually I stick with the goodies, bar, the pie, and the column chart. Why? Because it just works when you have eye colors to build, or ethnicity or gender. It's, it's perfect for bar charts and pie charts. And of course, really the only measures I care about are mode and proportion. What is the mode? You know, the most often eye color, the most frequent ethnicity in the region. What is the most frequent stress level at this job position? Proportion. What proportion of people buy the large drink at the movie theater? You know, so I can staff. All right, what proportion of people have this type of DSM-5 stress, DSM-5 indicator variable for blah, whatever one you're looking at, whatever potential abnormality you're looking at. Proportion is a great measure when we're talking about qualitative variables. All right, quantitative variables, flip them around. Quantitative variables, green, are variables that are numeric. And we have two of them. I gotta learn to pace myself so you guys can listen carefully. Discrete, quantitative. So two A. See, discrete and continuous are underneath quantitative. Nominal and ordinal are underneath qualitative. So if somebody says quantitative, you can break it down into: is it discrete or continuous? Discrete means a numerical value that arises from counting. For example, books on the desk. You can say, hey, I got four books on my desk. Hey, I got eight books on my desk. And the count is typically not a decimal when it's discrete, right? What is 1.2 books? That doesn't make any sense. Baskets made in a game, right? A player can make three baskets. A player can make zero baskets. Usually whole numbers arriving from counting process. Continuous. Now, this is when you get that fine numbering system when you can have any number possible because of the measuring process as long as you have the equipment to measure it for example height weight you can measure these out in many many fine units as long as you have the right equipment of course we round them that's true and that's why i say uh where is it? any continuous variable can be made discrete by rounding 
These are kind of my quick big notes, right? Temperature, right? You got the med weather person. The weather person says, hey, it's 97 degrees out. That's not good enough to me. It can actually be 97.45328 degrees out. That's an awesome weather person. I tune into that weather person because they're being accurate. Of course, they round the temperature. So temperature is usually discrete because of the fact we round, like height. Height, we round to 60 inches, right? You can measure it in centimeters, millimeters. You can really get a fine measurement, but most of us just round. Weight, same idea. Pounds, ounces, grams. You can go crazy on this. Salary, you can go down to cents, but most people just round up. And pretty much anything with decimals, we can round. As soon as you say round, you can make it discreet. And you do, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Just going to tell me ahead of time. Are you rounding? Then we'll use discrete. If it's continuous, awesome. Nothing wrong with continuous. means decimals are allowed, and I'm okay with decimals. Another note, any quantitative variable can be made ordinal. And that's very important. Any one of my quantitative variables, I can pause and make them ordinal. For example, blood pressure. You actually take the blood pressure and you get a discrete number. But typically, we group them into low, medium, and high blood pressure levels because that's what we typically do. You can, again, run the blood pressure, get a number, and it's discrete. But you can turn that into an ordinal variable just by applying a ranking to it of low, medium, high. We do this a lot when it comes to reaction times, right? Reaction times are quick or slow. But you can measure reaction time with a clock, with a measuring system, like running. You can also do running. You could say they're a fast runner, a slow runner, a medium pace runner, but you have the times and that groups them into buckets. That's the idea. If you want to group a numerical into a, an ordinal, you may do so. You just got to tell me what the ranking is. This is the awesome and also sometimes the confusion when it comes to statistics. A number can kind of cross into a bunch of categories, whether it's ordinal, discrete, or continuous, but you just got to explain why it's in that category. And that's really what I'm looking for, is a good explanation. Blood pressure, we measured it as low, medium, high. Ah, ordinal. Blood pressure is a number, like this, blah, blah, blah. Then these numbers are numbers, and they're discrete, and that's why blood pressure is discrete. You just got to tell me what you're defining your variable as. Because once you define your variable as qualitative, once again, I'd follow my next videos, pivot table, R charts, pie charts. If you decided to go the quantitative route, I got a bunch of videos coming then. On frequency tables, on histograms, box plots, stem plots, all great topics. And you can look at them right up on my YouTube site, right? Quantitative variables, I start with frequency tables. Then I move on to histogram and box plots. Then I talk about measures. Of course, the mean, median, mode. When you have quantitative variables, we're going to talk about the mean, median, mode, and what they mean. And then we're going to talk about standard deviation and variance. And once we get all this, we can talk about the shape of my data. When I collect my data, what is the shape of the histogram? What is the shape of the box plot? Well, that would be skew left, skew right, and normal. What kind of shapes are those? And of course, there's one more I want to add, or two more. Symmetric. What is a symmetric shape? And what is a uniform shape? I'll be adding those down the road. These are all my vocab words we will be playing with this semester. So once again, what I would do is pause this video right now and just start reading up on each one of these specific items. I'm going to, in the future videos, rip apart the qualitative variable first. Then we're going to move into the quantitative variable. So first we started with a qualitative variable, then we're going to move into the quantitative variable. And you'll see a lot of future variables on the quantitative variables first. All right, guys, welcome to the game. Hope to see you in future videos.